and may I be your voice and may I be your vessel so that all that has to be said is said. Thank you once again. Thank you. So I'll start with a small introduction of uh, myself. I'm uh, Alien Foni from uh, the foothills of the Himalayas from a place called Kalimpong. And uh, I come from a lineage of female shamans. And what got me to this point here today, sharing this story is uh, maybe five, six years ago, going through something that uh, people know as the shaman sickness. And uh, I basically broke my mind, my body, my heart. And I was helped uh, in a place far away from home uh, to come back to myself, to the earth, to my ancestors. And uh, since that time, it's taken me a long time to be grounded in my study and uh, to be able to come here before you to speak whatever it is that I am going through and I have been through. So this is a very personal journey for me, for searching for my roots, uh, for searching about my tribe, about the mountains, our guardians, and, and so much more. So today I'd like to share the story of the River Tista and her journey. And what I would like to begin with is actually um, the story about dragons kind of began because um, dragons have been trying to um, speak to me for a very long time now. I was just looking back at some old sketches and uh, 10 years ago, I've been drawing dragons. This is 10 years ago when I didn't really understand what was happening and uh, I found two. So, yeah. so this is from 10 years ago. And uh, I didn't understand what was happening at that point of time. And I didn't really, I don't know, didn't bother at all. And then when I came to know about uh, shamanism and my tribe and about spirit beings, I actually began to sense and see them around me. A few examples of which is um, when I had gone to volunteer at a permaculture farm, there was a dragon, two-headed dragon, that uh, came to me and usually it comes out in my sketches or in my meditations. And uh, when we went and I followed where it was showing me, it was a cave, a small cave that was on the path of the water and uh, trash had been thrown there. A lot of trash had been thrown there and that was its house. So it was calling to tell me, to tell the people that live in the area to clean that because that's where uh, water flows. People drink that water and that is its home and, and it was desecrated. So that dragon appeared to me at that time. Then when I went to Sikkim, I, during my meditation saw a dragon that was flying at a spot that I used to walk and a huge, huge, big dragon. And I didn't understand. And uh, when I asked my friend that I saw a huge, huge dragon over there, then he told me, he took me to a place right next to it. And he showed me that there was this abandoned shrine for uh, Nag or Naga that people call over here, which are serpent-like uh, creatures. And it was, uh, some people used to go visit there, but it was mostly overgrown plants and, and uh, nobody would have known that uh, it was where the dragon was worshiped. And um, another time I saw it wasn't Sikkim, but many of them were flying in the sky and oh, it was a very beautiful uh, sight. Uh, a lot of times people uh, think I'm crazy because they think that she looks as she sees dragons and she talks to them. And, but um, this is the magic land. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see as many dragons as you want and they will show them to you only if you believe them. So. Yeah, uh, it's okay, I'm mad and that's good. <laughs> um, so coming to the dragon of the story. Basically, uh, it just kept coming to me that from my heart, this dragon is emerging and she's female and she's coming, so be ready kind of a, a thing. And I didn't know. I had no clue what was happening and uh, I began to draw her. 
And she's emerging very, very slowly, but I was warned ahead that she would be emerging. And uh, this dragon, I started another painting of her. And uh, this painting was when she first began emerging in my heart, actually, to begin with. And um, it was kind of slow. And we as humans, or me, in my nature, I was like, oh, why doesn't she just come out now? You know, because I, I was uh, impatient. And she's like, no, you got to wait. You got to wait. When she comes, she'll come. You'll know. And you'll know what to do. But what I'd like to describe about her is that she was so wise. And she is so wise. And she is so gentle and loving and strong and so protective. And she was there. And she was calling to me. And um, I was still scared to listen. And I didn't really know what to make of it. Because in our tribe, um, from what I heard from my grandmother and my father, was that dragons live in deep, dark waters, and that they're known to live near water. That was the only thing I knew. And so I wondered where she came from, what she is here for, why she's calling me. And uh, so I started looking and searching uh, and visiting the elders on my, of my tribe, some shamans of my tribe, uh, Bung Ting and a Mun. Bung Ting is a male shaman and uh, Mun is a female shaman. So I started searching. And um, I'll start the story. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. I'm going to read some bits from here because it's already written and uh, and I'll speak some. My name is Alien. I am the shoot of a plant. And I'm here to tell you the story about the world of dragons, about the world that we don't always see. A dragon has been rising within me for 10 years. And I finally begun to listen to her. She flows lovingly with immense strength and wisdom, carrying tenderness, love and nourishment and, count and countless lifetimes of experiences and stories. She asks me to let her love and heal me and help her tell the stories she carries within her. She encourages me to speak and ask us all to connect with her again. May we invoke and remember her once more. May we surrender and accept her wisdom and nourishment. May we let her love us, so it is. I'm gonna to move to the next. So basically, the origin of the dragon that in the previous frame is our sacred mountain, is Kongchen Konglo or Kanchen Dunga. And uh, the Himalayas are known as Kongchen Chubi, which basically means Kongchen Konglo and the other mountains. So for us, our sacred mountain is Kongchen Konglo. And uh, it is the place of our origin. It is the place of the beginning of everything for us lectures. So basically, the rivers, the dragon is part of Kongchen Konglo and is born from Kongchen Konglo. And all the waters that are from that area, which is known as the whole of Lecha lands are known as Mai Liang, which means the hidden paradise. And what happens is from the mountains, there are two rivers that flow, one being the masculine, which is wrong eat, and one being the feminine, which is wrong me. And basically, 
The dragon has been traveling with Romney, the feminine, the female river, for as long as the dragon can remember. Uh, they have traveled together and the dragon has collected so many stories and so many memories of, of everything. And uh, so that's where the dragon uh, or originated and the dragon and Rongni travel together. What I'd like to say is, if you look at the chapters or at, at the different frames as we go along, uh, it is the journey of the river Tista, of Rongnu, of the dragon. And it's also the different um, stages of water or personalities of water it um, uh, embodies at that point of time. So this is ice origin and that's where we all orig originate from so in the himalayas in in Kongchen konglo the peaks carry masculine energies the lakes carry feminine energies and the caves are the origins of our clans so different um uh, clans have different uh, peaks lakes and uh, caves that they worship and revere and uh, one more, I will kind of be putting a, a little bit more information as we speak. Um, so it's interesting how when you are female and you worship for your, from your clan uh, a certain peak or lake, because I'm female doesn't mean I worship the lake more and the feminine energy more. It could be anything that you need for your own energy and for your own spirit. So that's like an interesting um, thing that I had uh, learned. And uh, basically, even the first humans, the Fudong Thing and Nu Zongyu, are made out of the same snow. So the rivers, the dragon, us humans, we're all made out of the same snow. So basically, when we start off and when we begin our life, we originate from the snow. And when we die, we return back to the snow. And we're connected in birth, in life and in death, and in life through the waters from which we drink and from which we get our food from even that. So this is ice origin. Flowing water birth. So this begins, or this is at a point where I went with my friends to the confluence of the river Tista and Romnu. And uh, Rongyu and Rongit and the dragon like white flowers. So I took some um, white flowers for offering. I took a rock, which I had picked up from ancestral home for some reason. And uh, my heart said, carry that along. And my cousin had given me a protective stone crystal and uh, something told me in my heart to carry that too. So I went there with my friends and sat at the banks and saw the confluence and felt the confluence. We offered our offerings and we prayed and meditated. But the feeling at the point where the two rivers meet, I wish there were words to describe that. Pulsating energy outwards, also inwards, and so powerful that I felt so little and I felt so afraid. Also, I felt very respectful, but it was very, very scary because I'd never felt anything like that. And when you're at the bank, it's quite close to you. So it was almost like if I go in there, it's going to suck me in. And uh, I was nothing. I was nothing compared to it. But then as I meditated and I prayed, I felt my ancestors behind me. And they were on the banks, like filled the banks. And um, they were there with me saying, don't be afraid. And uh, I just stood there like really stiff. And uh, they introduced me to the rivers. They introduced me to the dragon. 
And they said, this is our daughter. Uh, Balin. We bring her to you and we stand with her. The rivers uh, stood there. Uh, not watching me or uh, testing me, but in a way, that's the feeling. They're scanning me, saying, okay, who is this person? And uh, they were kind and gentle, but also quite firm, I could sense. And they um, told me, and they made all my fears and insecurities, my shame, guilt, name and faith, they just showed it to me. And I was so afraid of them, of my responsibility, and of myself, of, of, of so many things that I didn't want to look at. But they blessed me. And um, yes, I prayed for them while we were there. But this get, got me more curious because I was wanting to know more. I wanted to know what do the rivers mean to us? Why are they sacred? Are they sacred? I didn't know anything, but I could feel it. I could definitely feel it. So this was the visit to the river. And uh, later, I went to a boom thing, who is a male shaman, to ask him about the rivers. And then he told me that from the Himalayas, the two rivers, Romnu, Primil, and Rongit, traveled down to the plains. And Rongit was led by a bird called Tutfo, which is a Himalayan mourner. And uh, Rongnu was led by a snake. And uh, as they moved down, since uh, the bird was faster than the snake, he reached earlier and he was waiting for her and she still didn't arrive and he got angry. And he turned back to go back. And uh, that caused a flood called Um Vum, which is basically the great flood that happened. And that's another story. But uh, uh, a bird uh, helped Kohumfo. He helped uh, uh, the lepchas uh, and warned them ahead. So they were saved. And he led them to Mount Tundong, where the waters did not reach uh, the lepchas, and the lepchas were saved. Meanwhile, back to the story. Um, so he was late and as he was turning, she arrived. And then she asked him, Thisata, when did you arrive? And uh, that is how the name Pista came about. And usually after they merge, they're known as Tista. Rongnyu and Rongi are known as Tista. But um, I was just looking at the Google Earth and um, the female river in the maps all the way up to the Himalayas is known as Tista. So the dragon follows and is traveling with Tista. And what I'd like to share also is that how connected we are to the rivers. Because when we are born, the shamans take the newborn and uh, the naming ceremony happens there. And the child is introduced to the rivers and to the dragon. And the name is shared. And this way, the rivers and the dragon, they all know us by our names and, and this used to happen. So this ceremony that is so important for us used to happen at this conference. So basically when you sit at the confluence of the two rivers, which also the interesting thing is both the rivers have different colors and you can see the two different colors merge and become one color, which is also very beautiful to see. So when you sit at the confluence, you can feel at the point where the two rivers meet, where they kind of swirl and meet. It feels like there's like a whirlpool under there or on top. There's a whirlpool there. And uh, that whirlpool or that confluence is also important in terms of rituals for us because another time we lectures go and visit them and have a ceremony with them, with our shamans, is when we get married. And at this point of time, the shaman introduces 
the male and the female that are going to get married and uh, they're introduced as partners and saying that these two will be bound together in love and life and at this point of time because this is the place where the masculine and the feminine merge uh, as rivers as energies this is the perfect place for the couple to unite because at that point of time the rivers and the dragons they bless the couple and they pray that their union be as strong as that of the two rivers. And the thing about this is the journey of the masculine and the feminine. It helps sift through all that is not needed. And by the end of the journey, what comes out and when they move together, they're stronger. They've kind of shared each other's stories of their journeys and their travels. And, and then they move forward together as one forging new paths ahead. So that is the, the part of uh, the story where the whirlpool is so important to us and how the masculine and the feminine merge together as one at this exact spot. So when the two rivers travel with the dragon, along with the dragon, from the mountains, down through forests, through uh, little streams, meeting all insects and birds and trees and moss, and meeting so many um, spirits, guardian deities. They collect all the stories, even through the rain and the dew, through the snow, they collect everything that is happening in, 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 in the area. And as they do that, they carry these stories forward. So they kind of have an idea of the state of things. They always know what is happening. And uh, that is really important. And I would like to say this because we now have access to so much information through so many mediums and we really don't know, we don't know so much. And it is important for us to understand that water, that the rivers, that the dragon carries so much wisdom and information and knowledge and histories, and that we don't listen to them. So, one second. And so the memories and stories that they carry with them out of how things were, of how things are meant to be, memories of life and flow. All this she feels and hidden, she feels deeper than ever before, the fractured earth, the loss of our ancient stories, the damming of her waters. She can hear the silent prayers, the quiet pleas for help, calling her out from within to retell the stories we have forgotten so we may remember. The dragon has been hiding because we don't see them anymore. We don't believe in them anymore. And at this point she feels, till now she felt that she needed to hide and that it was pointless. But now with the state of things and with everything that is happening with the waters and with our rivers, and the damming, the same river is dammed, I think over 25, maybe more dams in the river. And she can feel mother choking, her children struggling, and even the river. It's like it's tied, it's not free. They're not free. The river is also the dragon's home and the dragon cannot be. So we have reached a place in our lives right now when this is a story of the river Tista, that this is happening with all the rivers all over the world. And we need to understand that they're alive and that they have spirit and that they're calling to us for help. This is Still water bridges to death. 
Before we move to this chapter, I would like to make a small prayer. Dear Mother Earth and the guardians of the earth, all beings that are here to help, we call on you for help, for the water, for the planet. We call on you for help to be able to open our eyes and to see and to feel and to connect. The dragon speaks. I have seen the waters emerge. I have seen all the light that we have lived. I have seen beauty. I have seen a seed go into a tree. I have seen and felt a lot. I come here today to remember with you the love that we share. I'm here today for you to remember free and to see us and to feel us and to know that we are here waiting waiting for you to hear us again you may think that only shamans can hear or see but we are connected by heart. Everyone can see. And everyone can feel. Please hear my voice today. Please feel my love. And know that I'm here to help the earth. Help us emerge within your hearts first. I send my blessings to you and to hearts, and I pray that you heal so that you can listen to your hearts again. Please give me a moment. I'll just put on the light again. Give me a second. Oh, sorry. My dog just knocked over the wire. Sorry, my dog just knocked over the wire. <sighs> Stop.
still water bridges to them. When the water in our being stops flowing, we return to the source. And a bridge to that source, the first one, is through the river, the confluence of the two rivers. In the physical uh, realm, the shamans kind of use their fingers to create a bridge and they take the soul across to the first bridge. And usually they go in pairs so that when they with the spirit, another person, because when they return, there has to be two in the, I don't know the reason for that, but uh, I'm gonna find out. And uh, basically after this person has passed from this world, and crosses the first bridge, a lot of times the spirit doesn't know that they're dead. And there's a specific female shaman called the Pildan, and she leads the spirit across all the way to the Himalayas. And a lot of times they're quite stubborn and they don't know they've passed. She convinces them by asking them to walk on the banks of the river. And she tells them, see, you leave no footprints. We have left the world of the living. And if they're not convinced still, she takes them higher up and she shows the spirit some branches, some bamboo leaves and branches. And she said, step on it and see, they don't break. You have left your body. You're not part of the living world anymore. And if they're still not convinced, she asks them to look for the reflection in the water. And uh, when they don't see it, they may be convinced. But if not, then there are more things that are shown and asked of, of the spirit so that they know that they have left the world of the living. And uh, from the first bridge after the spirit crosses, then they're taken to the second bridge, which is in Kongshin Konglo, Kanchen Songa. And there, their clans are verified and, and they're verified because the, the person who's deceased is sent or taken to the lap of their grandparents or their ancestors. So we have to take them to the right cave uh, otherwise. I think that would be bad if <laughs> they reached the wrong cave. So even in death, we are connected uh, to the rivers. And uh, what I did not share about the frame before is that there is another ritual and another ceremony that happens in this. It's like at any point in one's life, after the birth ceremony and the marriage, then there's something which is kind of like a life ceremony where we share with the rivers and keep them updated about our lives, uh, where we've reached, how we've grown. And so the rivers are kind of, they catch up with us, uh, with our lives. And that's also one of the rituals that used to be done with the shamans. And then the death. And from the confluence, the journey further out, to the sea and they carry so many memories with them. They remember stories of snow-capped mountains forming, of a seed growing into a tree, of forests emerging, of birds that planted the seeds, of waters that nourished the seeds, of flowers that gave bees honey and the stories of our lives and all our emotions from the time of our birth, they remember, they remember everything. The thing about this and this image here is also, I would like to share my journey to this, to the rivers and the dragons. After all the fear and all the emotions and the past and 
everything surfaced and it was like you have to look at it you have to you can't run away and um this also comes with great responsibility because they're there telling you you have something you need to do it's almost like grandparents saying you're being naughty you're trying to delay something it, you can't so i prayed and i meditated and um, i was mindful tried to be mindful and these deep 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 buried thing started to emerge and it shook me inside out round and round everything was chaotic in the inside and the outside and i was afraid i was ashamed i was so many things and it manifested in my external life it wasn't a bad but because some things are so tender within us so many triggers different for everybody and their fingers were on all my triggers i think all there's more but it was i didn't think of it as a test but it was in for me to speak for the dragon to come for me to connect to the rivers i had to remember that i'm supported in my ancestors the earth and the rivers and the dragon they're showing me all of these things because they love me and they want me to heal and i slowly began surrendering slowly but i wouldn't push myself i would do it as much as i could each day a little more mindful a little less reactive looking at many traumas and sending love to it accepting it releasing it so many things it's, it's like these are just a few words of what i went through i was in chaos and then something amazing happened and it it um, so the dragon started showing itself 10 years ago this other dragon started surfacing the other visions of the dragon started surfacing about a year and a half ago with the visit of the river also and since the year and a half and in fact the 10 years it's been i mean you can look at it as chaos and you can look at it as struggles but you can look at it as opportunities for healing opportunities of being brave opportunities of being gentle opportunities of connecting to everything in i think why i'm saying this is because a lot of people a lot of us go through this everybody does but we forget that we are loved that we are supported and that there is magic there is you know you can't deny it there is and they're here to help us grow to help us see and all of this why because the the beginning or the starting of connecting to the earth and to helping her to connecting to the rivers to everything is by connecting with oneself first and it is such a big lesson because if we push things away we are not open to receive because there's so much space that is already taken and there's so much chaos so the past uh one and a half years the story even this story and i said it to you in a very short kind of way it for me the paintings the art the stories they they emerge they take their time and uh, it's taken the story about one year six months and 10 years of them trying to tell me to listen and uh, the last month has been like the peak of all of this inside that needed to be loved and looked at 
And there came a point where I was sitting in my meditation and I think that is the turning point. And it happened first with, I saw a raven outside the house and uh, two of them, one of them was eating uh, another dead bird and the other one looked on and I've never seen ravens up close. And uh, I, I looked at the raven and the raven looked at me and uh, I have never felt anything like that. He was very powerful, very scary also. And uh, he just looked at me and I actually got scared. So I kind of pulled the curtain and went back to my room and I didn't address it. And then when I sat for my meditation, the raven took me on a journey to the underworld of underworld of just a spiritual, I can't explain. And um, I was inside a dark cave with very, very narrow walls that was really tight. And in the distance, I could see light and I was scared and I was afraid and I was anyway afraid of the, of the raven and the power yeah, it had. And I was there in the cave and the raven was there with me watching. It was kind of nice to have the raven there. And as I watched, I was like, no, I have to walk. I'm going to walk. So I started walking very slowly, inching my way. And then at some point, I stopped, then I could see a section of the cave uh, that was not so narrow, kind of like a room, like a room. And I sat there and I said, okay, I will sit with my darkness then. I will sit with the darkness. And I sat there, obviously afraid. But I sat there and I started breathing. And I could feel my heart pulsating. And I saw, white light and uh, it was kind of like a like a pearl light with like shimmer of like uh, like with the shine of like uh, pink and purple and blue and, and then I could feel that light in my heart very as it as my heart was beating that light began pulsating and in that heartbeat I could feel I could hear some song and many voices in it. it was like the voices of my ancestors and a song that I didn't know the words of other language, but I knew and it was beating and it was pulsating light and the light spread out through the entire cave. And that made me feel so supported and so loved because we carry this in us and in our hearts, in our DNA, in our souls. The voices of our ancestors, their experience, their wisdom, their knowledge. And they were there with me through this. And I was so grateful and I was feeling so strong, so strong. And it's funny how the universe works. The next day I see this image uh, on someone's post on Facebook where there was uh, Avatar, if you guys have seen Avatar, Avatar. <laughs> and it's like he's standing there and there are his many forms standing in a line. And it just said, walk like 3000 ancestors are walking behind you. And that was amazing. And in this vision, I could see from where I stood and where the light was coming from. I, I didn't know how far it was or how, how close. There was a line of ancestors that lit the way. And I felt strong and I felt that I can do this and they're with me through this. And I just kept walking. And that vision ended there. So basically, once the rivers and the dragon from the confluence now they've merged and they're going towards the sea and the oceans. What happens is what I call the magic of the skies and the, and the sun. 
they basically come back, the mist is rain, snow falling, and they rejoin the Himalayas once again. And this is a cycle of the rivers and the dragon. And this is a cycle that they keep repeating. What happens is that as they've collected, as they're born again, and collect all the information, the histories, the energies, the stories, the emotions, as they go to the ocean and kind of share that with the rest of the water bodies from all around the world and collect more from there. And then they return back to our source. They return back to the source that the mother stores them for safekeeping. So that once again, when it is time to share that information, those stories, those memories, those learnings and wisdom that she would pass them on through the waters. So that is the cycle. That is the cycle of the rivers. That is the cycle of the dragon. And that is what I wanted to share with you today. What we're doing is that we're stopping that cycle in so many ways, in so many ways. We have to remember that every action we take, every thought, every breath, everything we do affects everything. We do not understand how important we are also for this sacred cycle of life. When you are disconnected with yourself and with everything around you, then you don't understand the cycle. May we begin to honor the cycles again. May we begin to understand our importance, no matter how small or big in this whole circle that we make. A circle that could be so full of love and light and energy that we can radiate it outwards, inwards first and then outwards. That is the trick. I have hope in humanity. I have hope and belief in this other world. And I know many can see it and feel it, but they doubt it. I'm here to tell you that it is real. It is more real than anything you will see on social media. It is a leap of faith and it is of great bravery for all who stand here and all who believe in this other world. People may shun you. People may think you're crazy. People may say so many things. But you got to believe. There is a way. You got to believe. And you're supported. And you are loved and you are protected and we're waiting for you to be healed. We're waiting for you to connect with us so that we can heal you, so that we can heal each other. It is possible. It is possible, so possible.
to all who are here today and to all on this planet. May you feel your ancestors. May you feel magical beings. May you feel each insect, each drop. May you feel each gust of wind and each ray of sunshine. May you feel it all in every cell of your being. May you feel love. May you feel love. May you feel love. This is my prayer for you. This is my prayer for the earth. This is my prayer for the water. This is my prayer for everything that lives, breathes and exists. I always be a moment after moments like those. Ice, wisdom, and rebirth. So in the last vision that I had, I went back to the river at the whirlpool and I felt millions of ancestors behind me. They were there supporting me and loving and telling me that they're there. I wasn't afraid of their dragging anymore. Their dragging offered love. I remembered the dragon. I remembered the river. I remembered my ancestors. I remembered. I remembered. So I went into the whirlpool that I was so afraid of and I wasn't afraid anymore. And the dragon stood on top of me, towering, also checking and testing me out, saying, what do you offer? And we as humans and me has to be perfect before, you know, everything has to be perfect before offering, before presenting, before everything. And uh, at that point of time, I don't know, all I felt was that this is me. This is who I am. This is how I am when I stand before you with respect and gratitude. I stand before you as I am with everything inside, outside. And I have nothing to offer you but my heart. And I offer the dragon my heart. And I offer the dragon my heart. I invoke the water dragon today and I ask for her blessing. And I ask her for the protection of the rivers. I ask her to protect our southern gate and I ask her to show me the way to protect me and bless me. And I offer her my heart. I offer my heart for the service of the greater good, for the service of Mother Earth. 
and I know she will keep it safe too. I am so grateful. I am so grateful. May we ask for protection of our water, of our planet, of our mother. And may we connect to the beings that offer this love and this protection and this wisdom. May we receive their love and may we pray to them to help us. Help us protect our mother. So it is, so it is, so it is. Our water dragons are calling us. Our elemental dragons are calling us. And many other beings are calling us. May we learn to listen to them. May we learn to honor them. May we learn to remember, to reconnect, and to honor and protect them. They remember us. Do we remember them? Oh, okay, we shall stop. How do you, one second. Oh. Thank you, everybody. Please pray for our rivers. Please pray for our earth. And what our shaman had uh, told me was that uh, the earth knows how to heal. We just need to pray that they find more strength, that they're empowered, that the rivers are empowered so that they can do what they need to do. And while we're living, let us be gentle. Let us reconnect. Let us heal so that we can heal as much as we can. Oh, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for holding space for me today. Every time I have these storytelling sessions, something big <laughs> happens. <laughs> oh, thank you. Okay, the story has ended. <laughs> this story has ended. <sighs> And we should visit the waters more often. We should. They, they miss us. There. <sighs> I was so nervous before this. I'm always so nervous before one of these storytelling. <sighs> yes. Hello, Ian. Yes. I mean, that was incredible. I, I was just at the end of it. We had an incredible offering by our Kogi friends yesterday. And this in its own way, a different way, but its own way was just as powerful. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, the universe is amazing. Do you know it's full moon in India today? So I also pray that the moon magnifies this prayer like <laughs> <laughs> it, it will. <laughs> it's full moon here too. Uh, I've stopped yes. all and everything. Uh, oh, good. Uh, if you want to, to, to chat and come down a bit, you have got the space to do that. Um, next one's not for half an hour, so you're all right. Okay. You I'm good me to talk you. <laughs> you had me crying too. Mm. Water flowing everywhere. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Yeah. Somehow I knew this was um, sacred because yes. I was instructed. I did the whole cleansing, the whole house, lighting everything, cleansing <laughs> it out, taking a bath, cleansing myself. And like I did the whole, I went the whole way. And I have to wear white during ceremonies. They asked me to wear white. Mm -hmm. So. Mm. I always cry. That's a good thing. Yes. 
Um, I just I just wanted to share um, with you, Alien. I don't know how you say your name, but that's correct, Alien. How I came here is um, the last month. There's been the Disney movie out called Raya and the Last Dragon. I know. I cried when I watched that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I cried. <laughs> that, that's what led me here. Thank you so much for this presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Just just so everybody knows, we've done circles where Aliana is like eating an ice cream cone and she cries. <laughs> <laughs> I cried at the Kogi thing yesterday too. Yeah, so did I. Yeah, so did I. <laughs> oh, it's crazy. One hour just Yeah. I, I like you. I had a feeling this would be really strong, and my my guide said I had to be here. My I also wanted. Yeah. yeah, my computer glitched. I couldn't get it up this morning, but I didn't worry because I knew. And sure enough, fifteen minutes before, I got it online. My internet's been acting strange yesterday. Today yeah. I was like, I prayed. I prayed for the internet too, and electricity and anything else <laughs> that could be a problem. <laughs> oh, full meditation morning in the evening and uh, protection. Yeah, yeah. I was asked to. I was quite strictly instructed to do so. Well, I'm glad you needed a tech because ever since uh, hearing you touch upon this story at one of the storytelling um, meetings that we had. I said, oh, yes. I don't really want to work with you. I work with land dragons because oh. here in, in England to me, I mean, I don't know what the history is. I, I just see them as dragons and there's lots of um, resonance there and that being some of them chained quite literally. Um, and even the place I went to in Wales, for a holiday with my son the other week it's they're sleeping in the ground i can see them yeah. and it's like i feel like part of my job is i have to go and wake them up and some of them they're a bit stubborn and like well what's the point we'll just wait until you lot have gone and it's like no we've got to get down somehow and even my drum is called dragon because he's there to wake up the land um mm -hmm. yeah so resonates very strongly with me Lovely, lovely. I could finally fully see it much, much later. She emerged fully uh, just a few days ago, mm. just a few days ago. But um, it's she's very, like I said, wise and kind and gentle, but also so fierce. Like even mm -hmm. I would, I am scared of her in a, in a, in a way, you know. But she comes with love, you know to serve and to help them. Yes. I just want to say the artwork was so moving. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That I did in collaboration with my partner. I'm actually a textile artist and I do very different kind of work. These are concept sketches. They're far from complete, but there's going to be kind of like textile art and illustration. And I'm going to kind of blend them together. Right now, these were at the state that it is in. And uh, somehow that's another big lesson through this was like, mm -hmm. whatever it's meant to be, it will. And it it will, you know, so I didn't struggle with that this time. Because I was like, okay, because I would have liked to finish the artworks. And that's kind of my nature. So <laughs> I'm kind of learning to be more patient slowly. <laughs> For people who have not seen textile There's art, and I didn't know what that was, that. but her textile work is incredible too. That that I, time you did a presentation on it, it just, you know, wow, textiles can be art, yes. Yes, if I can type it there, uh, Alien Phoning, uh, you can see, if you wanna look for some of my work, actually mm. uh, can do that. So I'll just like put it in there. That's my name. Oh, alien. Sorry. Alien phoning, the second one. Um, 
oh, that's gone into another chat. Uh, one second. I'm very bad with the. Yeah, I'm getting better though. <laughs> Alien phoning. And uh, the textile artwork is called The Story of the Moon. I guess if you Google it, you'll find it. Here. <sighs> Thank you so much. Now I can sleep in peace today. <laughs> it was building up inside <laughs> so much. It was really building up. So I'm going to. Well, it was beautiful. Okay, Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. Yes. Lovely. If there's anybody who wants to ask or say anything, then we could. And otherwise, we can, I think we can, yeah, we can wrap up. I just want to say, just, and I have not formed this very fully in my um, my thoughts, but I, I value your tears very much. Mm. And I am not one to allow my tears to flow, but I see that as so rich and so connecting. So thank you for that encouragement and your openness. Thank you. Thank you. I hope and I pray that you find uh, release and relief in whichever way that it will come. Okay.